So um, let's start by talking about the issues that have been raised by the videos. There's been a lot of talk about, I, I think sometimes the issues uh, get kind of derailed because people go down rabbit holes. And uh, you, there are several things that we, we've talked about that uh, um, uh, are legal issues that are raised here. Um, why don't we start with, well, you, you've said there are six. Let's start with, just start from the top and I'll do follow up with you on that. Well, one of the issues that started, started this whole conversation was the fact that these undercover videos demonstrate that Planned Parenthood at the highest reaches of the organization has been involved in selling human unborn baby parts for profit. Now, Planned Parenthood has disputed the idea that there is profit involved, but I think it's quite clear from numerous um, points in the video that that was the intent. There's, you even have, you know, kind of color, colorful admissions from one very highly placed Planned Parenthood doctor. She said, you know, I want a Lamborghini. It's caught a lot of attention and people have said, oh, she was just joking. But when you look in the context of the conversations that are on the video, it's very clear that there's a profit motive involved. Has anybody done the numbers to make this case one way or the other? I mean, some people are arguing that at 30 or $60 a specimen that there's really not enough money in this to... Well, you have to keep in mind, and this is also demonstrated on the video, that each baby provides multiple specimens. So it's very, very tragic that um, for people to say, oh, well, it's only $50. Well, the, the law is quite clear that any profit, if they're making a dollar off of um, the tragic sale of human tissue, then that's illegal. Okay, so um, how, many, uh, how many specimens might you get out of a single um, infant? Well, think about your human body parts, right? There's, there's brain, there's liver, there's heart, there's lungs. Um, there's, in, in the research world, they're, they're looking at the baby um, for its parts and all mm -hmm. of its component parts. And you know, this is part of why the videos are so powerful is that these, these are human beings and the reason that they're valuable, and this is what the videos demonstrate, the reason they're valuable is because they're human. Um, and so they have all the parts that, that we as adults do, and so that's what makes them valuable for research. Okay, let's talk about some of the other issues. Like, even if we set aside the profit issue uh, and just conceded that, uh, if you were to concede that, you would still have other issues that you think would be very, very troubling that have been raised by these videos. Could you I, th I think this is one of the most important parts, is that Planned Parenthood would like for people to think that once the question of profit is resolved, that the issue is over when in actual fact, Americans United for Life, our legal team has done an extensive uh, policy analysis of every single one of the videos. We've watched all of them. And we submitted to Congress uh, a very extensive 24-page analysis of the legal issues involved, and we found six different areas that the videos document where potential felonies, um, there's probable cause for investigating them. That's why we have to have the congressional investigations, is to look into and find um, more information than what you're able to find on the surface. The first is the profit concern, of course. Um, the second is one of the things that the videos document is that the doctors are going in and they're changing their procedure in order to get more saleable parts. They talk about going in um, with a shopping list, really, of, 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 of human organs that they're looking for, which is really, really appalling. They talk about, you know, getting together with their staff at the beginning of the day and going in with a list. Um, that's illegal to change your procedure in order to get a more marketable. Um, so saying human. that I have a list is not quite the same as saying that I've altered my procedure. But you say that's true. But there's right? but there is there is a clear conversation in multiple ones of the videos saying I have my list. I know what I'm going in to get, and I'm going to use a specific procedure in order to get an intact specimen so that I so that so that it's usable for mm -hmm. researchers. And that's illegal under federal law? That is illegal, that is illegal. And actually, um, the, there's overlapping illegalities. The reason it's important to distinguish the fact that they're changing their procedure is that the procedure, not only is it illegal to change your procedure, but the one that they're moving towards is also um, illegal at a federal level, and it's called partial birth abortion. Basically, partial birth abortion is a sonogram-guided procedure where you flip the baby and bring it out by its feet first and kill it at the last possible moment. 
Um, that, was, that was upheld by the Supreme Court in a, in a ca case called Gonzales v. Carhartt, and it is, it is illegal in every state of the nation. I thought that uh, the standard partial birth right, was a head first, where they, uh, I don't want to get too gruesome, but uh, I thought that was during the debate over partial birth abortion. No, a normal, a normal delivery um, is delivering okay. a baby head first. Yeah. And so what they do in partial birth abortion is they turn the baby around and deliver it feet first, um, and this is what gives them more intact specimen and oh, they kill in, in it in this, at the last this possible case. moment. Right. Um, okay, so one of the problems that you've talked about is the uh, is not just that they will intentionally do the manipulate the procedure and, and do the partial birth as you suggested, but also that sometimes infants are born alive in these abortion procedures and that's actually a serendipity if you're trying to get um, organs. Um, how, how uh, first of all, we know that's illegal under federal law how uh, detectable is this and how enforceable and what are the sanctions if, if this is? Well, you know, in this whole process, uh, we are very pleased that Congress is taking this whole issue very seriously and there are now five separate investigations ongoing in the United States Congress and I was invited by one of the committees in the House of Representatives to provide testimony. I only had five minutes and so I had to focus my remarks on what we consider to be the most egregious issues that are documented in the video. And those two issues that I focused my testimony on are partial birth abortion and infanticide. We believe that the videos do document probable cause for investigating infanticide. As you said, it is difficult to prove infanticide because obviously the whole point of abortion is to end up with a dead baby. But they talk repeatedly in the videos about delivering intact specimens. And you know, in this kind of brave new world that we're dealing with of Planned Parenthood manipulating the language, intact specimen means an intact baby, a baby that is mm -hmm. completely in one piece for harvesting. Um, as they're, they're using partial birth abortion to deliver the baby that way, and the, the side effect of that is that sometimes the baby does come out alive. Mm -hmm. um, and there are several conversations in the videos that are very, very disturbing as abortion doctors kind of laugh about, you know, accidentally delivering babies. Mm -hmm. um, now, when we're talking about the born alive issue, this gets to some of the editing issues in the films. Um, there has been a charge made that uh, in one particular case that a stillborn infant was used in place it, during the narrative that actually suggested this, uh, this was a born alive child. Um, the, the filmmaker says that this was made clear in the video, but um, some people have used this as an example of uh, you know editing that was deceptive. I think that what we're seeing with the opponents of the video is they're wanting to pick it apart and try to find anything that they can hang um, an accusation on to undermine the videos. I, I, I do not, I, I can't represent the entire story about a particular frame in the video. That's, that would be a question for Mr. Delayden who made the videos. But my understanding is that it's quite clear that that particular um, frame in the video is clearly labeled as an illustration of the particular age that the baby under discussion in the video um, was. So when people say that these videos were heavily and deceptively edited, uh, let me ask you, when you guys went through all of these videos, did, did you see raw footage? Is that what you were looking at without any editing? We've, we've seen the unedited video. In fact, all of your viewers can see the unedited full raw footage which is posted online. Um, there, there is complete transparency here and my challenge would be back to those who are accusing these videos of being edited of, you know, how exactly, what context makes it okay to talk about potential felonies, to talk about delivering a baby through partial birth abortion, to talk about delivering an intact specimen and then selling it for profit. How do, how, what kind of editing makes that okay? So um, then to the editing thing, you would say, for, first of all, if I, if I go to this and I look through um, these unedited videos online, I'm going to see a lot of choppy pieces where there's like, you know, a cut and then a cut and it will be, it will be kind of chaotic, it should be if it's unedited video, right? Is that what I would see? Sure, I mean, 
the, the truth of the matter is, is while they, while the undercover investigators had the had the cameras on, they mm -hmm. went to the bathroom, they sat around waiting for people. You know, if, if you want to watch that, you know, go ahead and go. But the truth of the matter is, if you go go read the go read the transcripts, it's all right there. And part of our challenge that I would also issue to our opponents on this issue is that the truth is, the longer videos are more damning than the shorter videos. There's more content. There's a whole lot more. David was undercover for o over two and a half years. There's a whole lot more content than you could ever possibly get into an edited video. And the reason, the reason that um, our opponents on this have been so um, so active in trying to suppress the videos and getting court orders to keep them under seal is because there is so much damning evidence in the videos themselves. So you're saying that if I go to the website online and I watch all of the unedited video, I'm not going to see the bathroom scenes though? That's, I, I don't believe so, no. Okay. And is there, are there like clear markers where it says, okay, now we're in the operating room and now the video is complete and clean up until a certain point? Well, it's pretty obvious what you can see it with your but own eyes. But there's no it's, editing. It's not, it's not that complicated, really. Yeah. And truthfully, um, some of our friends with Alliance Defending Freedom actually hired an independent um, investigator with no ties to anyone to go through the videos themselves. And they came back and said there was nothing but standard mm -hmm. kinds of editing in the mm -hmm. videos. And, you know, I, I would go further and challenge those who are don't believe in the veracity of the videos you know whenever it's you know undercover videos are really acceptable in every context except abortion you know what even the even the congressional committees that um, on from the Democrats who are have been so actively trying to suppress the videos whenever it's one of their issues that they're energized about they are more than willing to accept mm -hmm. the veracity of undercover videos Let's talk a little bit about public opinion. Um, I think that some people were a little surprised to see the support for Planned Parenthood staying as stable as it has under over the last several months. Am I misreading those polls or is that? We're actually seeing Planned Parenthood's uh, approval ratings slide downward. Um, for one of, the, this is one of the first times we've ever seen that kind of phenomenon. Mm -hmm. I would say that we went into this very realistically expecting that Planned Parenthood is a pretty big opponent. They have a billion dollar budget. They get a $1.25 million from the federal government in subsidies every single day. Excuse me, $1.25 million from, um, from governmental sources every single day. Uh, they're a behemoth. It's, it's not unexpected that they would uh, fight back to defend themselves. They do have high approval ratings. And one of the reasons they're so upset is that they have kind of sailed above public opinion for so long on unchallenged, unregulated with, um, and, and this, is, this is putting a dent in that as people get the opportunity to see the reality behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. One of the reasons this, these videos are so significant is these are not receptionists, these are not um, normal staff level people that, um, that the videos engage with. These are high level Planned Parenthood doctors and multiple ones across the country. It shows corporate wide corruption and fraud. What do you uh, do with the issue? And I realize that, I mean, there's, there's a pretty simple answer to this, but um, you know, in California, it, you have to have two party consent to, uh, to recording. How do you approach that from a legal and ethical standpoint? Um, well, uh, Mr. Delayden is very well versed in the law related to undercover um, video production, and he consulted attorneys in putting together this project. And he um, argues that he has obeyed all of the relevant laws, and so that's part of the. the it's obviously a matter for the, our judges to decide. When you're in a public place, you do not have to have two-party consent. And so uh, one of the videos, there it was a pretty slam dunk case that it was a public place. And one of the other videos, a judge uh, was taking some time to consider whether or not uh, the law applied. But um, he did his, he, he's done everything that he can to comply with the law in putting the videos together. So some of the videos have raised issues, although I'm not sure that they, they've kind of like closed the loop. They, they certainly raised the question of uh, whether the, um, 
tissue, whether the samples, whether the, the, the fetal samples are being obtained properly with proper consent, without pressure, or even with consent at all. Um, could you, uh, you know, kind of like, for people who haven't seen the videos, could you kind of give us a sense for that issue? Do you know, I have to say, some of the most horrifying footage to me was from a whistleblower named Holly O'Donnell who worked for STEM Express, which is one of the middleman companies. So that they go in and they take the tissue from Planned Parenthood. Frequently they're located on site in the Planned Parenthood, so they're co-located. They take the tissue, package it, and then sell it. Um, on down the line to researchers. She came forward to talk about how horrified she was by the experience. When she took the job, she didn't know what she was getting into. And in the video, she talks about the consent process with women and how, how it is done in a very underhanded way, a very quick cursory way, and even in some instances where women who have not given their express consent, where their tissue, the, where the baby's organs are just taken without their knowledge. There's one case that she describes where a particular um, uh, pregnancy was of interest to the, uh, the agency, and she was pressured to go in, and, and even after the mother had said no, she was pressured to go in again. Well, this is a great concern. In fact, when we talk about the profit motive, we have to stay focused on the fact that there's a real conflict of interest when Planned Parenthood is going in and doing the consent process. Um, a woman is in a very vulnerable position. Does she know what's actually happening to the organs? Does she know that Planned Parenthood stands to profit from it? We're very concerned about this element that um, women may not be being told what, what it is that they're actually signing. Now, Holly's credibility has been challenged, obviously. It seems necessary. But uh, um, how do you go about regulating this? I mean, if there's so much opacity throughout this, all of what we're talking about, there's enormous opacity. Um, why is there so much opacity and, and what can be done to improve the regulatory oversight? Well, you know, I have to say the first line of defense of scoundrels is to attack the messenger. And so we fully expected that, that they would try to attack David, that they would try to attack Holly. And I frankly think it's quite remarkable that, this, that we're this far into the scandal and they really haven't found anything substantive to undermine the credibility of either one of them. Really and truly, when you think about going up against this abortion giant that has a billion dollar budget um, every year, it's, this, is, this project is really remarkable. How do you otherwise get behind the veil, behind the closed doors of these clinics from people whose business model depends on killing unborn babies? And now it's been really revealed that they also make money on the other side through selling their, selling their broken bodies. So in the standard regulatory model, there's always the fear of regulatory capture, where the uh, regulatory agency becomes you know, too close and buddy-buddy with the people they're regulating. There are, there's usually some kind of host hostile relationship, kind of some kind of adversarial relationship that's supposed to be in that regulatory relationship. Um, is there anything like that here? Part of the challenge we face that, of course, the Obama Justice Department, which would be the natural place to investigate and to pursue some of these charges, is not um, not interested at all because there's such a close relationship between the Obama administration and Planned Parenthood. Mm -hmm. So the next natural line of defense is the United States Congress and so we're we're very gratified to see five different congressional committees pursuing an investigation. But there are also investigations all across the states. Um, in more than a dozen states they're looking into this. One of the most aggressive is in Texas for example. So. Our hope is that eventually we're able to see documentation and um, evidence coming out from the states that buttress the videos and that provide actual evidence. But investigations are crisis regulation. What you really need in, to, do, to properly regulate an industry is to have some kind of ongoing regulatory oversight well, that's routine. Well, the important point is that Planned Parenthood resists any kind of common sense regulation whatsoever. In fact, they are challenging the regulations that the state of Texas put into place that requires uh, abortion clinics to be uh, regulated like ambulatory surgical centers. Any kind of common sense regulation Planned Parenthood resists with their entire firepower.